So a more uh, consistent or more modern uh, type of authentication mechanism is Kerberos. And um, why they call it that is this is like one of those Greek uh, mythological creatures that has three different heads. And the reason why they call that is because there's multiple mechanisms by which you gain access to the system that is very secure as opposed to just using a single username and password or some or some easier methodology of gaining access, okay? And so just recognize that Kerberos has three main components to it, and the ones that you should be aware of are this concept of a key distribution center. So anytime you hear the term authentication system and a um, reference to the key distribution center, you know automatically that that's what we're talking about, okay? because it's the only mechanism right now that has the ability to be able to do that. The second thing is called a ticket granting ticket. Once again, I love how they smash the same word in there and over and over again. But, but it's essentially the mechanism by which you present in order to uh, gain access. And then finally, the service ticket is what allows you to access the particular service that you're wanting to, um, you know, uh, interface with, okay? All right, so this uses uh, what's called secret key cryptography or uh, private key cryptography. And essentially what that means is the same, the same um, password or the same um, key is used to do both encryption and decryption of the messages that are sent over it. Okay, so those are the authentication mechanisms or the tools by which we should be familiar with in terms of the exam. Now what we're going to do is we're going to switch gears a little bit. We're going to talk about access control. So there are different reasons why you want to have different access control. It could very well be that you have a high security organization that's necessary or like DOD in this particular case and there's a specific methodology by which you need to secure your systems, or you can start to depend that your users that are providing the inf information and the data are the ones who grant uh, access to the information. And that's why we're going to go through here. We're going to talk about this concept of mandatory access control, and it's going to be a set defined um, methods or rules that indicate whether you have access to it or not. This is used um, in high security organizations. DOD applies this in the methods that we do. So obviously if you have unclassified or, or secret or top secret information, each one of those classifications have a, a very specific meaning. And unless you have that particular level, you're not able to get access to it regardless of how good of a person you are or whatever or even if somebody created the data, they can't provide the data to you if you don't have that level of certification or uh, uh, classification. The difference between the mandatory access control uh, and discretionary access control is the fact that we have the people who actually create the data. So say, for example, you go out and you're in a commercial um, organization and somebody created a bunch of data worksheets on, you know, revenue that's going to be generated for the next fiscal year, right? Um, they ultimately are the owners, and they could provide you with that for one reason or another. There's no, uh, there's nothing on them to preclude you from getting to that data, okay? And so in that particular case, the owners are the ones who allow you access to it. The last one we'll talk about is called non-discretionary access control. And how these work is if you are in a position, like for example, if you're a system administrator, well, because you're a system administrator, there's a hundred different things that you have access to because you have a higher level of you know, knowledge and experience and that sort of thing. And why it's non-discretionary is it's not, the data owners aren't the ones that provide it. It's just based on where you fit into that rule, okay, or that particular role. So we have what's called rule-based and role-based there. 